Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for stopping by the channel. If the title of the video wasn't enough to clue you in, the Yoda action figure here certainly will, but this is going to be a very quick look at some Star Wars cards. Just a short video today. I know the Star Wars content isn't for everybody, but I love it. Um, great movie franchise, especially when I was a kid, and I love the different options, cardboard options that are out there uh, to enjoy collecting Star Wars cards. So I have a cheap batch here that I got all of the cards in this stack for about $20 total and really happy with that. These are uh, top Star Wars high-tech cards and if you're familiar with like the baseball realm um, these are acetates the same thing here these are acetate see-through clear cards uh, with rainbow foil patterns behind the character. Um, this set was produced by Tops for three years consecutively from 2015 through 2017 and found one seller that had this whole little batch um, brought all these home for about 20 bucks, and uh, there I knew there'd be one or two disappointments because uh, you don't get a photo on Sport Lots, and this card here was one of them. Um, did not realize when I picked out this Padme that this is the um, computer-generated or illustrated version of her character from the Clone Wars um, television series, which I've never watched, um, quite honestly. I kind of stick to the live-action stuff, so um, no big deal. I'll put this one in a trade or giveaway pile. Um, it was like a dollar. Actually, it was a dollar, I believe. Um, many of these were. Um, and making up for that fact uh, from the same set, which is the middle release in 2016, I did get the actual Padme uh, Amidala played by Natalie Portman. So pretty cool card there. And th these are just, I know they're shining um, kind of like crazy, but these are just base cards. Um, there are parallels, and we'll see one of those in a minute. Um, but for the most part, these are all base, and they just have this great rainbow foil effect. And the shtick with these is that there were different patterns um, in the background with different rarities um, each year that they were printed. So, you know, the, the normal set is known as, like, Pattern 1, um, and I think there are a handful of other, you know, more rare patterns that you can accumulate uh, from the release. So there's uh, Padme in uh, human being form after the uh, computer-generated or computer-animated Padme. Um, and then the other one that was kind of a bummer, took a chance on this one, uh, saw a gold... Boba Fett, and uh, for anyone that collects Star Wars, you, you may be aware of this already, but uh, Boba Fett is one of the more popular characters, and his cards, just like Darth Vader and Yoda and a few others, just seem to demand a premium. Um, so there was a gold Boba Fett. These are numbered out of 50. I love these. In fact, I showed uh, two Darth Vader golds out of 50 recently. Um, took a shot at it, and it, in the end, it ended up being the child version of Boba from the uh, the Films 1 through 3 trilogy that came out, gosh, probably 20 years ago now. Uh, probably the least uh, popular of the three trilogies that comprise the nine film, you know, main arc of Star Wars. But I mean, whatever, it's still a Boba Fett out of 50. Probably, uh, I maybe send this one to my buddy uh, Ken at Ken's Cardboard. I know he's a big uh, Boba Fett guy. I don't know if he'd be turned off on that based on the fact that it's uh, childhood Boba Fett. But either way, those were the kind of the two whiffs, the... Uh, the computer animated Padme from Clone Wars and the child Boba Fett gold. The rest of these were home runs, just like this Natalie Portman card. So let's just go through them quick. And then I'll get to a big pickup that I had that is not tech related. Um, so this is the 2015 release, this gold Boba Fett. And you can tell because it has the vertical nameplate. Uh, the 2016 release, which we saw at the beginning, has a tilted nameplate. And then the final release in 2017 has a horizontal nameplate. So it's almost like easy way to keep track of uh, what set it's from. You know, the nameplate moves the way a clock does. So if the nameplate is upright, that's the first set. Diagonal is the second set. Horizontal is the third and final set. So this is a 2017 Obi-Wan. Pretty cool one there. Um, these are all just going to go into my non-sport Z Folio. This one I was really pumped to find, the Royal Guard from 2017. When I was a little kid, I thought these guys were the creepiest like awesomest characters, uh, very mysterious, and they were always protecting, you know, the Emperor, and I uh, just love the kind of the costume there and the bright red in contrast to all the other black and white of the Empire and everything. It's just really like those uh, characters growing up, so I was happy to find that one. And then the rest of these are going to be really more main characters that uh, you will easily recognize, and we'll start with, uh, and some of the more popular characters too, so I was just really happy to to get this whole lot for 20 bucks, but I did get a Yoda from 2017 as well. Awesome stuff there, just great shine on these. The backs don't really have anything going on, it's just rainbow foil. 
Uh, obviously being acetate, they can't really put anything in the in the clear area here without messing up the effect on the card. So um, these are all about the card fronts, not the card backs, but there's a cool Yoda from 2017 to go with that Royal Guard. Uh, next up, we have the Skywalkers, brother and sister. So we have Princess Leia from the 2015, the inaugural release. Love that image of Carrie Fisher. Just classic, you know, pointing, holding the pistol up. And of course, to go with uh, Princess Leia from the 2017 release, we have Luke, who's here in his uh, fighter pilot uniform as opposed to his Jedi robe or anything else. Um, Luke, I think, is included in probably, I think, yeah, all three sets. I think the middle set might be like old Luke, uh, old man Luke from the newest trilogy or the, the most recent trilogy. Um, but yeah, two cool cards there of Luke and Leia. Just love these. I'm really just a sucker for acetate. And just like in the same way that I think tech works well, or acetate, I should say, works well for hockey cards because it's a game played on ice. I think tech works really well for Star Wars cards because they just look like futuristic. Um, so that's, uh, you know, after looking at Yoda, Luke and Leia, some of the, you know, the, the positive or good characters, let's look at some of the evil, a couple of the evil guys, a pair of uh, Boba Fett's, two different patterns from the original release in 2015. And here you can see what I'm talking about. Um, these are both the same card, same image, uh, both from that 2015 release. I think this one on the right is the base or more common pattern one. And this one on the left is one of the more rare patterns, you know, two through five. I'm not really sure which one it is off the top of my head. I do have to look these up. Not that much of a uh, Star Wars tech connoisseur, but again, everything I said about Boba Fett uh, when I showed the gold card holds true for these as well. Just a very, very popular character in the original trilogy. So tends to command a premium and uh, happy that I was able to scoop those up. And then lastly, on the tech front, also got two Darth Vaders. So um, didn't have these in in time to show them off when I did my recent VR for uh, Matt and Ty over at The Card Story on my little Vader collection, but added two more cards to it here with the 2016 base and the 2017 base. And I really love this one, how it kind of has the, the foil sort of radiating out from the center behind Vader. Just really cool looking cards. I, I just, I will buy these up all day long if I find more of them, you know, significant characters like this at a, you know, one to $2 price point, even for the base cards. It's just uh, too tempting. So uh, I don't know. We'll see uh, how it goes with Star Wars here um, in the new year, but I do like this little grouping. And then to finish it off, let's uh, clean some room here in the front. Have another card from a more recent release. Um, I believe just came out in 2022. Um, don't hold me to that, but I'm relatively sure. And it's the Topps Chrome Black release. Um, so baseball, modern baseball collectors will recognize this. Um, it's like a high-end product. I think you only get a couple cards or a few cards per box, uh, including a guaranteed hit. Um, I don't rip stuff like that. It's you know, too rich for my blood. I'd prefer to get a single that I want. And boy, did I find one. So this is uh, from that Topps Chrome Black set. Got the Mandalorian card from the recent series. I believe uh, season three is scheduled to drop sometime in the next few months. Um, really enjoyed the first two seasons. Um, a few things drew me to this card. I like the continuity of the Topps Chrome Black brand uh, across baseball and Star Wars. I do have a few baseball cards. Um, that use this very similar design. Um, I think the subtle refractor effect, like you can see kind of the rainbow refractor up here in the upper right, um, is just really gorgeous. Um, this happens to be the gold number to 50, which was also a big uh, plus for me. I, I just really love gold cards, serial numbered out of 50. So this is another cool addition to that gold collection. And then obviously the image that was chosen for this card um, is just really nice having the Mandalorian and the child um, in that same image. I just think this is sort of like iconic. This is the way you envision those characters when you think of that uh, show and all the success that it's had. I, I've really enjoyed watching that uh, program and uh, just think this is a pretty significant Star Wars card when you add all those variables together. Um, I paid up for this one, certainly like more than I have any other Star Wars card last year. It wasn't anything crazy. It was maybe just barely over $100. Uh, but for a Star Wars card, that's a pretty big investment for me. But I'm happy with it. 
Um, I think it looks great even mixed among these other tech cards. Um, just a nice futuristic grouping or futuristic looking grouping of cards here from uh, my favorite science fiction franchise of all time. So that is a wrap today. We got it done in just about 10 minutes. I really appreciate you sticking it out for some Star Wars content of all things uh, here on the channel. This will probably start to dry up and it'll be a lot more uh, baseball with some hockey and soccer thrown in, but um, did think it would be fun to do a couple episodes like this. And I'll probably do one more Star Wars episode later this year on May the 4th. Uh, but until then, I appreciate you stopping by. I'll be back in the very near future with some more content here. And in the meantime, I hope everybody enjoys the hobby and stays safe. Take care.